Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Bishop Barron, the regional bishop up in lovely uh, Santa Barbara pastoral region. I'm here today to preach at the gracious invitation of Archbishop Gomez because I'll be accompanying a lot of these young people over to World Youth Day in Krakow. Good. It's great to see so many of you here today. And what a gospel we have for today. Uh, Martha Mary, I found in my 30 years of preaching, this gospel bugs people maybe more than any other gospel. More people have come to me saying, you know, Father, doesn't Jesus give Martha too hard a time? You know, the supporters of Martha are many. Well, let me give you one way of reading this and then try to tie it into uh, John Paul II and Krakow. What's Martha anxious and upset about? Remember what does it say? Many things, right? Martha, Martha, you are anxious and upset about many things. One thing is required, and that's what Mary's chosen, the better part, right? If you look in the old Latin version of this gospel, it says, unum necessarium. There's one thing necessary, and that's what Mary's chosen. Martha is anxious about many things. So, I think this gospel is about the one and the many. A lot of us are Martha in our culture because we're anxious and upset about lots of things. Our families and our jobs and our entertainment and the future and the past and fears, and we find ourselves preoccupied by all this stuff. And what do I turn to next? I got this fear and this anxiety and this concern. Do you have a name for the devil in the Bible? Is the scatterer. Diabalain in Greek means to scatter, to cast apart. That's where diabolos, diablo in Spanish, diable in French come from, to scatter. The demonic is the scattering power, which is why when the Capernaum demoniac, remember, Jesus comes into the synagogue in Capernaum and this one fella comes in. And what does he say? He says, what do you want of us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Well, what's going on here? It's one person talking. But he speaks in the plural because he's scattered, divided. Unum necessarium. There's one thing required. What is it? Christ. Christ. When Jesus Christ is the center of your life, everybody, now listen, listen. When Jesus Christ is the center of your life, without competition, then let everything else find its place around that center. And you'll be fine. You will have found the unum necessarium. The troubles were running all over the place, here, there, everywhere. Let Christ be the center, and then let everything else find its place around that center. Now, take a look around in this great place and see these images of the saints. They're not just pretty pictures. See, where are they turned, these saints? Well, look, they're all turned toward the altar, toward Christ, with us, right? There's the heavenly liturgy. They're all preoccupied with the unum necessarium. And we've come today to join them, to stand with them, facing Christ, the one thing necessary, facing his body and blood. Then we will find peace. We'll find the center. Okay, World Youth Day Pilgrims, John Paul II. How how many are 19 years old here? Any 19-year-olds in this group? A few of you. When John Paul II, Carl Wojtyla, was 19, he's at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow, right? Serious young student. When he was 19, the Nazis invaded Poland, and they overran his hometown of Krakow. They decapitated the intelligentsia. They took all the professors, literally brought them into a big room, killed many outright, sent the rest to prison. They imposed upon Poland the most brutal tyranny of the 20th century. Here's this young, idealistic, smart kid, and this terrible, terrible storm broke out. 
what did he do? What did he do? He found the center. Young Karavoitiwa hunkered down and he studied the Bible and he learned the church's spiritual tradition, especially the Carmelite tradition of St. John of the Cross. He studied the saints. He studied Polish literature in which was ingredient all the great themes of Christianity, God and human dignity and freedom. John Paul II, the young Karol Wojtyla, hunkered down and found the center at a time of enormous diabolical power. Then he becomes a priest, and young Father Karol Wojtyla now endures the communist persecution. So it was, it was the worst crisis of the 20th century. The Nazis are followed immediately by the communists, who impose an equally brutal dictatorship. What did young Father Wojtyla do? He kept finding the center. He took young people like you, your age, took them out on camping trips and kayaking trips in the, in the region around Krakow, partly, by the way, to get away from the communist censors and spies. Do you know that every room he lived in was bugged? We know that now because the communists have records of it, which were uncovered in the 1990s. They knew, by the way, Karol Wojtyla's toothpaste. I'm not kidding. Shaving cream. They knew how he shopped. They bugged every phone, tapped every room. Can you imagine, by the way, if that was true of you or me, the trouble we get into? The fact that they never came forward with anything, I think, is, is the surest sign that he was a saint. The man was under constant surveillance. So he took these kids out into the countryside, and what did he do? He taught them to find the center. During a time of diabolic chaos. Which is why, when that young man, that young priest, now come of age as Pope John Paul II, returned to Poland in 1979. You guys are way too young to remember. I remember it very well. Remember some in this room remember. 1979, in some ways the height of the Cold War, there were people both inside the church and in the political world who said, hey, hey, this John Paul II, this is dangerous stuff. He's going to stir up the Russians. He's going to start World War III. But see, he had found the center as a young man, kept it all his life, which is why he was able to stand up in the public square in Warsaw, the whole communist government right behind him. And then he began to speak out of that center, out of that unum necessarium. What did he speak of? He spoke of God. He spoke of salvation. He spoke of the cross. He spoke of the resurrection. He spoke of human dignity and human rights and freedom. And you remember the great scene? The people, as he spoke, began to say, we want God. We want God. We want God. And they say it went on for 15 minutes. Can you imagine a million people shouting for 15 minutes, we want God? That's the moment, they say, when the communist empire fell. It was one person who had found Christ as a young man and was so grounded in that place, in that center, that he was able from it to change the world. Now, that's the city we're all going to in Krakow. We're going to go to his hometown, his place, the place where he was formed, the place where he learned to find the center. And see, that's the whole point of a pilgrimage, isn't it? That's the whole point of a pilgrimage, that we go on the march, we go together to a sacred place, we turn like these saints to Christ so that we can get centered again. We're all going now in a week or so to commune with John Paul, yeah, to commune with millions of other young Catholics around the world, yes. To commune with the priests and bishops of the world, yes. But above all, everybody, above all, pilgrims, we're going to commune with him. We're going to commune with him. We're going to find Christ, to find the center. And then if we do that, we too can have that same serene smile that John Paul II had. Some of you remember, don't you? 
especially John Paul in his prime, even with the forces of the world arrayed against him, there was that serene smile that's born of someone who's found the unum necessarium. That's what we're going to find too.